on the app. It's amazing on what's going on. Amen? Well, I'm honored today to share uh, on short notice, because if it was long notice, then they would have stressed a little bit. But I've asked the son that was the one that said, I'd never work for you, Dad. <laughs> Dad, you can't pay me enough. And he was in the marketplace for years out there. And so him and his wife, Sherry Ann, he's the CFO, the chief financial officer of WCF, are going to share this morning's message. So let's give Brian and Sherry Ann a warm welcome as they come and share on Dream. Well, good morning, WCF. Good morning. We're excited to be here today. As Pastor Rick put it, you know, we weren't really, uh, you know, completely prepared and prepped for this uh, week's message. He, was, he had one plan for you guys, and then Tuesday morning, you know, we still weren't, you know, had any expectation. And next thing you know, we get this phone call, and it's Pastor Rick, and he's like, you're doing the service on Sunday. <laughs> he's like, you got to be instant in season and instant out of season. And we're like, all right, we're here. We're... So we believe that God doesn't do anything, uh, you know, without a reason and a purpose. And we do believe that we have a message here for you today that's going to be quite relevant uh, for this congregation today. And, I, you know, it is an honor, first of all, you know, to, to speak, you know, with my parents here in town. But also, you know, here in the front row, if, you know, Sherry's parents are actually here. If you guys can stand up for a moment. They drove in from Toronto first thing this morning to kind of, you know, make sure they heard Sherry speak. Uh, you know, so we wanted to, uh, you know, honor you guys as well this morning. So. so anybody been terrified of something before? I'm, I'm not terrified here. Like, I'm just, I'm not. Um, but, uh, but anyways, we all know that Brian here is fairly comfortable when it comes to, like, speaking in a microphone, standing in front of people, and all that kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, I think we have a picture here of um, Brian when he was just a few years ago. <laughs> and it looked like he was uh, preaching to the I don't to know where they find the these things. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so nothing's really changed. Although before that, um, word has it that he used to get so nervous that he would just grab his pants and, and mm. hold his pants like that when he would talk in front of people. But um, yep. anyways, he's come a long way. I've come a long ways. But for those yeah. of you who know me, know that this is not necessarily the most comfortable place that I've ever been in, um, in front of people, right? So... Um, so anyways, this is a step outside of my comfort zone, but that's okay because, um, like he said, we're going to be instant in season and out of season. Um, but since we're up here and this is our first time up here, I'll share a little tidbit about, our, um, about us, right? So Brian and I have been married for 14 and a half years. They've gone by like super, super fast. Yeah, like 10, it feels like 10 minutes underwater. Um. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, so right after we got married, um, how many know when you, when you first get married, you have to get used to um, living together with somebody, right? So Brian used to, um, he used to fill up like two full glasses of water. There's that water again. Here's the water again, mm -hmm. yeah. He used to fill up two full glasses of water and leave it beside the bed because during the night he would drink the water. So this one night just after we got married, he's, uh, he's lying there and I'm, you know, I kind of realized we're sleeping already. And then all of a sudden I kind of realized that he's reaching for this water. So nothing really new. And he reaches over and he grabs the water. And so I'm thinking, okay, you know, he's going to drink the water. But he's not really sitting up very, very much. You know, I'm thinking, how is he going to drink this water? So <laughs> before I can even register what's happening, he just reaches over and he dumps it on top of me. <laughs> and so... Um, Anyways, he dumps it on top of me, some water splashes on him, and he wakes up, and he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, what am I doing? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and uh, so anyways, he told me that he was dreaming about watering the plants or something like that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yes. so it was at that moment that I realized that not only is Brian a dreamer, but he also puts action to his dreams. Yes. From that point forward, she learned about many of my other dreams that have taken place since, you know, with snakes and spiders and other yes, types of I've things. Yes, I've been saved from lots but of how animals. But how many would like to hear a little bit about one of Sherry's dreams, <laughs> right? <laughs> Completely different scenarios altogether, right? You know, it's normally like typical household morning in, in our houses. You know, Brian gets out of bed. And for most of you who know me, I don't really generally, you know, wake up very well in the morning. It's kind of like walking through the house with mild grunts and, you know, eyes still sleeping. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I finally get ready and I'm about ready. You know, I go and I give Sherry, you know, a kiss goodbye and love you, dear. And, and then I'm, I'm walking out the door. So, you know, I go out the door and, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, Sherry's just like, hey, I had a dream last night. And I'm like, 
that, that's great, dear, you know, awesome, you know, and, you know, I'm ready to go. And she's like, you want to hear it? And I'm like, yeah, but I, I, I kind of got to go to work, right? You know, how many like this in the morning, you know, you're just ready to walk out that door and all of a sudden, you know, the wife's like, oh, yeah, you want to hear the dream? Yeah, sure, I, I, I got to go to work, but you know, no problem. <laughs> and, and so she's like, and so anyways, I'm out in the field, right? And I'm, and I'm walking, you can name it, it could be like a street, a field, wherever it may be. And she's there, and she's like, and there's like, the kids are with us, and you're there. And, and the next thing you know, there's like this crowd of people, and they all start popping up around, you know, boop, 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 right? And I start looking at their faces, and I realize that they're not happy. And, and then I look at their hands, and then they have stuff in their hands. And the next thing you know, they're chasing us, and we're running through the field, and, and we see the church, and we see the church doors, and we run through the church doors, and all of a sudden, we're going through rooms, and we end up in the basement, and she's like, oh, wait a minute. And by the way, when we were walking through that room on the second floor, I noticed that it wasn't decorated or renovated quite the same way as I see it today. So we need to take a look at maybe okay, really okay. taking a change over to that room. <laughs> Uh, you know, keep it on, in plans and mind for the future, all right, right? All right, okay. So that's so, enough of my dreams now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I dream a lot of crazy dreams mm -hmm. over the years. Um, but anyways, we're going to get started with our message. So today's message, if you haven't figured out by this point, we're going to be talking about dreaming. Specifically, yeah. don't quit your daydream. Yes. So if you want to turn in your Bibles with us, we're going to start in Genesis 12, and we're going to start in verse 1. So it says, The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. You see, basically God shows up on the scene, and he comes down and he speaks to Abram, and he tells me, he says, hey, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless those who bless you. I'm going to curse those who curse you. And all the families of the earth are going to be blessed as a result of you. And so God comes and he takes what, he, what is this, this seed and he implants it into the heart of Abram, right? And that seed that he implants is a dream, right? And how is that of God, right? You know, to come down into our lives and, and speak forth a word right into it that changes us, right? See, there's creative power in the words that we speak, and there's creative power in the words that God speaks. It says in the beginning, it says, you know, that God spoke and the worlds became into existence, okay? And here we are now, how many years later, and God's creative forces that he spoke forth are still creating things in the universe that we live in. And so when he speaks and imparts that dream into us, that's an exciting moment. And so it can come in many different ways, shapes, and forms, right? It can maybe be, you know, a, pro a prophecy that someone has or a word spoken, or maybe it's a literal dream or a vision that we see. But nonetheless, God imparts that dream into all of his creation, right? And so right after that takes place, we see another, another step here that Abram has to take a look at is he has to make a decision, okay? He has a decision to make whether he is going to reject that dream or whether he's going to accept it, okay, into the heart, okay? And so what ends up happening is, is that we all go through that kind of process, you know, where God walks in and he says, hey, here's a dream. I got something for you today. I have something that I want to impart into your, into your soul and into your, into your heart. And, and we have to then take a look and say, hey, what are we going to do with that? Are we going to accept it? Are we going to reject it? And right away it says that Abram, and if we look in verse number four, it says, so Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years of old when he left Herod, right? So, so he put his faith, the father of faith, right? I love this, right? Uh, put his faith in the word that was spoken. So if we take a look, and if we can, let's jump over to uh, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews 11.1. 1. First of all, we're going to learn, it says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of, of the reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. That's exciting. Right? So it says, so see, hope precedes faith, okay? And God is a God of hope. 
and it says that dreams give us hope, okay? And, and if you look in Proverbs 13, 12, what is Proverbs 13, 12? It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, okay? How many of you have ever had hope deferred before in your life? Right, and you walk around, and you got that that you know that pit inside right now, where you're just like you're, you feel hopeless. You know, you're you're depressed, and there's you know nothing is really working out for you. And so I remember you know being in stages of my life where I felt hopeless. You know, I, you know we work a lot with the young adults ministry, and you know one of the the common you know dilemmas that young adults are in as well is is you know the same where I was when I was in my twenties, where it's like I want to get married, God. You know, and, and things just, you know, kind of weren't working out, you know, the way that I had anticipated. And I just, you know, you know through this or this, and it just it wasn't happening. You know, my parents over here were constantly, you know, like, we got to get this boy married. We need to get him out of the house. <laughs> and, you know, how many have been tried to been set up by Pastor Rick before in this place, right? <laughs> I mean, Pastor Rick is, you know, like, hey, you know, I got such and such for you. You got to meet them. And, and, and Pastor Rick is, is a wonderful matchmaker, we all know, right? And this one time, this one time, he, he sets me up on this blind date. It's the only blind date that I ever did in my life, and it will never happen again, I told him. Of course it and so I went on this blind date. I don't need to do another blind date, no. But, but uh, anyway, so I go on this blind date, and I come back, and, and it was just, it was disastrous. And I'm telling Pastor Kathy about it afterwards, and she's like, how did this happen? And I'm like, well, Dad, you know, set me up with it's such a And she's like, Brian, she's like, I could have told you that, you know? <laughs> and so I learned, I learned a lesson in that, which is a completely different story. But, but anyways, I had but then there was a day when, when hope changed, right? And, and anyway, so I was in that state. And I remember, you know, God ministered to me when I was in that particular state. And, you know, God, you know, progressed me through some different stages. But anyways, this girl kept coming to my mind, right, in this particular time. And hope, hope arise. And I had hopes of asking her out, right? But it just didn't happen. So anyways, I'm gonna, we're going to jump back into that story in a second. But go to he, let's go back to Hebrews and we're going to jump into the sixth verse at this time, Hebrews 11, 6. And it says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So in the Amplified Inversion, it says, but without faith, it's impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. You see, there's... There's some, there's some tidbits in this particular section that talk about, you know, all of these different elements, right, of hope and faith. And, and what we want to take a look at here is, is that dreams act as a homing beacon, okay, to point our faith in the right direction, okay? And so we need to allow those things to materialize for us, right? See, without faith and hope and action put into these things, right? The, the dreams are just dead in the water, right? We need faith. It's vital to fulfilling our dreams. So you see, afterwards, I had to exercise my faith, and I had to ask this girl out, and I did, right? And so I go, and I, I go out with this girl, and I ask her out, and she opens her mouth, and you know what she was opening her mouth to say was, no. no. <laughs> True story, right? She's like, no, right? But but no didn't come out. Somehow it came out with yes, right? And thank God for yeses, right? Because at that moment, hope re reappeared and dreams were being fulfilled. And the second part, right, of that verse in, in Proverbs 13, 12, which says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life, right? And, and Sherry has been a wonderful tree of life to me over this particular time, right? So, and... Uh, Anyway, so we see that now then Abraham, okay, he accepts the dream and he starts and takes off after it at the age of 75 years old. So right. at this point, um, this is still you. I know, I'm going to still talk for a moment. All right. <laughs> I mean, I can take it if you want. She can but. take it, but we'll take it back. All right. So <laughs> what happens next? I'm trying to remember first service and second service, right? You know, so anyway, so in verse number five, immediately what happens is, is we see 
Abram, he arrives in the land flowing with milk and honey, right? And all of the people of that land come and they bow down before him and they, they honor him and then they pack up their bags and they leave the promised land and they basically say, here you go, Abram. And he shows up with millions of people all around him and all of his descendants are there and he just lives happily ever after. Except for this is where I'm going to cut you off now because it's not the way it happens. Um, it actually okay. happened quite differently than that. Okay. Um, so at this point, we see that <laughs> Abram embarked on a journey at this point, okay? So, you know, he's now accepted the dream, but now he knows that he's on a journey. He has to start something. And so on this journey, he's carrying inside of him the dream that God gave him. So we need to understand that there's always going to be action that needs to take place when we have a dream inside of our heart, right? You can't just expect that, you know, I have this dream and, and I have this goal and I want this to happen and I'm just going to, you know, pray that it's just going to land in my lap because it just doesn't happen that way. We need to put action where our faith is. We need to put action to things. And there's this distance between you and your dream and it's called action, right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to do things that, um, that, that will help us fulfill our dreams. Number one, we need to spend time with God. We need to, you know, it says that Abram constantly talked with the Lord and God constantly reiterated his dreams to him. So Abram had many struggles throughout his entire journey. You know, he didn't have an easy life, but he still fulfilled the promise. He still fulfilled the dream because he spent time in God's word. We need to get to know God's character. We need to get to know who he is. How do we do this? But we spend time with him. We get to know who he is. We read his word. We put that on the inside of our hearts. The Bible said that the word of, says that the word of God is alive and powerful. That means that it's working on the inside of your heart. So when you actually spend time in the word of God, you're allowing it to take root and, and create something inside of you. Mm -hmm. And so right away after action uh, takes place is that you're going to come into another season, right, where of struggles, right? Often struggles follow right, when, when we take an action. And so, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, we are challenged right away with, a, you know, almost a, a different situation, a different outlook. You get this, this great impartation and then followed up with a struggle. And these struggles come often to try to even squash our dreams, right? And God uses, uh, can take those circumstances uh, that we find ourselves in, and he can build our character up through it, right? So those dreams have an opportunity to knock us out, but if they don't knock us out and we, and we stay close to the vine and we stay connected to God, he encourages us as we go through the process. And on the other side of that, character's developing. And so with that, the struggles that come, one of the first things that takes place in Abraham is he had to take a risk, okay? God tells him, get up and leave your family, leave the ones that you know, the country that you're in, and take off and go to this unknown territory, right? So he had to get out of his comfort zone, right? There was no more safety net. There was no more security for him when God spoke and gave him that dream. And so that's the first thing that kind of, you know, there's always a risk associated with dreaming. Yep. And when you step outside of your comfort zone, there's something that, that happens and or there's something that's presented and that's fear, right? When you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, like today, I'm stepping outside of my comfort zone, you know, and I'm, I'm actually not afraid today, but, um, but if you would have asked me 10 years ago, or maybe well, even last week, um, I probably would have <laughs> laughed in your face and said that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be up here, um, because that I was terrified of that. Um, but anyway, so fear is associated. Can we play the, um, the skydiving story? If, there's, if there was one uh, concept that I would um, suggest to people to take a daily confrontation with is fear. Um, the, the, the problem with fear is that it lies. For me, the, the daily confrontation um, with, with fear has become a real practice for me since about three, three years ago, um, I, went, uh, I went skydiving. So then that night you're laying in your bed and you just keep, <laughs> <laughs> and you're terrified. You keep imagining over and over again jumping out of an airplane and you can't figure out why you would do that. So you get there and then you have the safety brief and you're standing there and the guys would say, well, if the chute doesn't open, what's going to happen is you're doing, you, well, well, why the hell, would, why, what could happen? <laughs> that the shoot, the shoot wouldn't open, right? But everything's normal. So you fly and you go up, you go up, you go up, you go up to 14,000 feet and you notice there's a, a, a light. It's red and it's yellow and green, right? So right now the light's red. So then you start thinking at some point the light's gonna go green but you don't know what's gonna happen, right? 
and you wait, and it goes yellow, and the light goes green, and somebody opens the door, and in that moment, you realize you've never been in a freaking airplane with the door open. <laughs> so terror, 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 right? So you go, and then, you know, if, you're, if you were smart, you sat in the back so you don't go first, right? And then people start going out of the airplane. And you go, and the guy walks you up to the end of the thing, and you're standing, and your toes are on the edge, and you're looking out down to death. <laughs> and they say, on three. And they say, one, two, and he pushes you on two because people grab on three, right? <laughs> right? And you go, Arr! and you fall out of the airplane, and in one second, you realize that it's the most blissful experience of your life. You're flying. There's zero fear. You realize that the point of maximum danger is the point of minimum fear. It's bliss. It's bliss. The, the lesson for me was, why were you scared in your bed the night before? Why did you, what do you need that fear for? Just don't go. Why are you scared in your bed 16 hours before you jump? Why are you scared in the car? Why could you not enjoy breakfast? What, 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 what did you need that? The fear is fear of what? You're nowhere even near the airplane. Everything up to the stepping out, there's actually no reason to be scared. It only just ruins your day. You're, you don't have to jump. And then in that moment, all of a sudden, where you should be terrified is the most blissful experience of your life. And God placed the best things in life on the other side of terror. On the other side of your maximum fear are all of the best things in life. So I know in there he says that God placed the best things in life on the other side of terror, but the way I would say it is that the devil inserts fear between you and your dream, and he does that to cause you to lose sight of what God's put inside your heart. If he can get you to lose sight of what God has put inside your heart and the dream that you have, then he can get you to stop doing God's will. He can get you to stop what you were meant for, and we're all meant for a purpose here on this earth. Um, and so there's freedom on the other side of fear. And one of the things that fear comes from is, is mindsets. You know, we can have negative mindsets, um, you know, either from generations past or mindsets that, you know, from a legitimate experience that we've had. But the thing is, is that we need to process through these mindsets. We need to allow God to speak to these mindsets and see his truth through things. You know, God took Abram outside of his tent in order to show him the stars in the sky to dream bigger. Right? And sometimes we like to sit in our little bubble. We, lead, we like to just kind of stay here because it's comfortable. It's easy. You know, there's, there's no fear here. It's, it's all good. But God wants to take us outside of that bubble. He wants to take us outside of that so that we can see the stars in the sky and the dreams that he has for us. Mm -hmm. And with that, continues to said is, is that adversity comes. You got opposition and contradictions that walk out in front of us, right? You know, one of the easy ways I always try to explain to Sherry, you know, Sherry is, is I know I'm in God's will because as soon as God speaks something to me, the next thing you know, I'm walking out of contradiction. And, and so what happens is, is that in that time, you start questioning yourself. Did I hear from God? Did he really impart this dream or did I not? And so it's, as Sherry had mentioned, we need to stay connected to the vine in those moments of our lives because it's God who's going to continue to speak to us and encourage us and point us in that right direction, right? You know, God just didn't show up and speak to Abram one time. He continued to speak to Abram. He's like, I started here and he said something to Abram. And then a little while longer, he said something to Abram. And, you know, he just kept re-encouraging because they were in communication with each other. And at this point, you know, I want to I wanna play the next video for us on con with contradictions here. Right, right. Then we're going to go sell a bone density scanner. How about that? You want to do that? No. <laughs> hey, Dad, I'm going pro. Oh. <laughs> I'm going pro. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. You know, uh, you'll probably be about as good as I was. That's kind of the way it works, you know, and I, I, I was below average. You know, so, whoa. So, 
so you'll probably ultimately rank somewhere around there, you know, so I really, uh, you'll excel at a lot of things, just not this. I don't want you out here shooting this ball around all day and night, all right? All right. Okay? All right, go ahead. somebody tell you you can't do something not even me all right all right you got a dream you got to protect it people can't do something themselves they want to tell you you can't do it you want something go get it Period. It's a powerful little clip there. You see, the devil comes right away to steal the seed that God plants in our lives. You see, what happened here is, is that right away, you know, he's like, hey, Dad, I'm going to be I'm going pro. Dad, I'm going to be a basketball star. And the dad, you know, kind of, you know, what did he do? He uses words that, that squash that dream. And, and you can see right in the video how his spirit becomes broken. And thankfully, in this particular case, you know, the, the parent, you know, you know, comes in and corrects that situation. But that's not always the case that happens in life. There's many times that we've been, find, you know, we find ourselves in those same situations in life, you know, where, you know, oh, I got this dream, and, you know, and then the, you, you tell this person, and the next person, you know, that person, you know, discourages you, or, or they squash that dream. You know, it's, it's the, those who are close to you don't always... Don't always see you the way that God sees you. God's perspective of you is slightly, you know, is different often than the way that you see yourself and the way that others see you, see you as well, right? You know, it's like the story of Joseph, right? Joseph was in the same boat, you know, the great grandson of Abram, right? And so he ends up, he's got this dream, hey, I'm going to be a ruler, right? And he tells this dream to his brothers. And what happened, you know, you know his, his brothers were like, they were mad. You know, they, they weren't real happy with this at all. They're like, what do you mean this is what's going to happen? And so... Joseph then, he ends up afterwards, he's still, you know, 13 years of contradictions follow up in his story. I mean, he's, he's sold into slavery. He's accused of crimes, you know, falsely. He ends up in jail. And it's not until many, many years later that that dream all of a sudden starts to become fulfilled, right? Not everybody can handle your dream, right? God gives you a dream for a reason, right? But it doesn't mean that everybody around you is going to be able to accept that dream and know that dream the same way that you have. You've got to protect it as well. And that's really important to, to this, the story of Joseph. Yep. Right. And so when we're talking so. about contradiction, you know, we go back to Sarah and Abram, right? Mm -hmm. they, had, they heard the promise. They heard the dream. You know, they, they accepted the dream. But, you know, they're in their mm -hmm. latter years of life. They've never had kids. And how does that actually happen if, you know, a child's supposed to be in my future? You know, and so our natural minds, not, we naturally want to figure things out for ourselves. So, you know, Abraham came up with this, you know, amazing plan that he would, um, you know, maybe the promise wasn't for both of them. Maybe it was just for Abram. Mm -hmm. Right? Maybe it wasn't for Sarah, too. And so, um, so they decided, you know, to send off Abraham to go have a child with Sarah's servant and thought maybe that's how the promise would be fulfilled. But then God came back afterwards and he says, no, 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 no. That's not my, that wasn't what I meant. The promise was for both of you. Right? And so mm -hmm. God, God came through and, you know, Sarah kind of laughed at it. And, you know, in any way, she ended up having a son named Isaac, which means mm -hmm. laughter. But, um, but the, the thing is, is that the promise was fulfilled, right? And timing plays a big part in this. And sometimes we think that, you know, maybe our time has passed or, you know, that, you know, it's too far gone or whatever. You know, but t timing has a perfect, God's timing is often different than our timing is, right? Mm -hmm. I remember when Brian and I were um, going to start a family. And, uh, you know, I had this picture in my mind of how it was going to go. It was going to be all great and amazing. And uh, I never took into account that I'd have a hard time getting pregnant. And uh, so I remember, you know, um, as a kid, I, my 
most valued dream was just to be a wife and a mother. And here I am, after a year of trying to get pregnant, not getting pregnant, sobbing on the bathroom floor and just having it out with God and saying, God, this was my dream. This was, this is what was supposed to happen, you know, and it's not happening. So, you know, what, what's going on? And so we're just, you know, back and forth with God. And I remember just getting to this point, sobbing and just saying, God, if I never become a mother, I'll still serve you because you are still good. Mm-hmm. And I knew that he still had a plan for me, even if it wasn't meant to be, if I wasn't meant to be a mother. And you know, two weeks later, I ended up finding out I was pregnant. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and I ended up having kids and I ended up becoming a mother. But the thing is, I would never, looking back, I would never change that year that it took us to get pregnant. Because what God did in my heart that day was more than I could ever ask for. Mm-hmm. He strengthened my relationship with him and, and strengthened the resolve that I had in my heart that I was going to follow and pursue God's dream in my mm-hmm. heart no matter what. Yep. It's because God changes us in the process. That's part of the journey, right, is that development process that he's developing character and different things in our life as we go. So that, that is part, part of that process. And she said, yeah, what trade it in? And uh, there's, there's a tidbit here that I want to throw in at the end of this story, right? And when we're talking about dreams, you know, often God gives us dreams, right? In this case, he gave Abram a dream, okay? But Abram didn't, didn't fulfill that fullness of that dream. It was his descendants who fulfilled the dream, okay? It was them who went into the promised land and overtook it. It was them who were the multiplication of making him into a great nation. It was eventually, you know, the Messiah who came through the bloodline, right, that brought salvation to the, to the world that eventually, you know, all families on this earth were blessed as a result of Abram. Right? So we got to remember that sometimes that dream starts with us, but God can continue that through our offspring and through our descendants. And that is, you know, it's critical for us to know, right, that there's a, there's a, a process that continues. And it doesn't just stop with you. It can continue into the generations that are coming as well. Yep. So we've talked about, you know, um, just God implanting a dream on the inside of us accepting it or rejecting it, you know, going through a journey and then processing through contradictions and just, you know, building character through things. But when it comes down to it, how do you actually fulfill your dreams? What's the process? What's the A to B kind of thing? And I'm going to give you three things. Number one, use your imagination. Mm -hmm. God gave us an imagination for a reason. We need to set time aside to sit and daydream with God. You know what? Sit there, daydream with God. You know, don't daydream all day, but daydream with God. Number two, you want to put a plan together and write it down. In Habakkuk 2.2, 2, it says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he, that he may run that readeth it. And let me ask you this, okay? If somebody came up to you today and said, I have unlimited amount of resources and finances to support your dream, would you A, know what your dream was, and B, know what is needed in order to fulfill your dream? These are important questions because if you don't know the dream that God's put on the inside of your heart, how are you going to tell people? How, you know, you never know when somebody's going to come, come across your path and, and want to sow into your dream, want to sow into your future. Mm-hmm. You need to know what God has for you. Right? Um, number three. I'm not done yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> number three, don't give up. Don't quit your daydream. Believe in yourself, believe in your dreams, and believe that God has given you these desires and passions for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have desires, we all have likes, we all have things that we enjoy doing, and you know what? God gave them to us. He put them there for a reason because he has a specific plan for your life. Mm -hmm. You see, we're going to go back, we're going to, we're going to close, you know, work on closing right now, And, and so when you go back to the story of Sarah and Abram, they're sitting around in their 90s. Okay, I think Sarah was at 90 and Abraham was at 99. And it's talking about how they still hadn't fulfilled, fulfilled that dream of having an offspring. And, you know, it was like, Abram, you know, it's like, oh, it's going to be me through Ishmael and so forth. But God shows back up on the scene. He says, no. He says, I'm the Alpha. I'm the Omega. Right? He says, you know, I am God. And I have a dream that is going to be fulfilled through Isaac, who's still to come through the loins of Sarah. Right? And, you know, it was at that moment, right, where it was reignited in them and that dream picked back up. And it's the same thing that happens within each and every one of us where, 
God's implanted dreams inside each and every one of us. He's planted it inside of Sherry. He's planted one inside of me. He's planted inside of you and inside of everybody here in this room. All of God's creation has dreams implanted on the inside. And there's this, this room is filled with dreamers, right? God's giving you guys dreams of, you know, to be inventors and to write music and to write plays and to you know, be teachers and all kinds of different exciting things that God has put on the inside of you. And, you know, over the course of our lives, maybe we've been beaten down and maybe we've been brought down to low places of discouragement or we've been forgotten or, or we feel like, you know, we're worthless. But God is here today to say, hey, I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. I have a dream that I've planted on the inside of you in the soil of your heart, and you need to pick it back up again, and you need to rise it back up to the surface and say, I'm going to fulfill that which Christ has for me in my life. I'm not going to let somebody else tell me what I can and cannot do, but I'm going to step forward into the dream that God has, and I'm going to fulfill it. And, and today, as we wrap up, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you guys, I said, if you want prayer, we're going to pray for those today who want to, to reignite that passion on the inside for their prayers. And if you guys want to stand up at this moment, we can pray for you as we impart that dream back that God has already put there on the inside of you. Sherry, you want to pray this morning? Sure. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for each and every person in this room. I thank you, Lord, that you have imparted dreams and desires and passions on the inside of each and every one of us, Father. I ask that you ignite these passions, that you would show us how to aim high and see the stars, Father, that we would be able to shoot our passions forward and that we would ignite a wildfire in our hearts and a wildfire amongst everybody that we come in contact with, Father. I thank you, Lord, for passions that are beginning to burn on the inside of each and every one of us. And I thank you, Lord, that we will continue to the very end and that we won't grow weary in well-doing, but we will reap in the end if we faint not. And I thank you, Lord, that you are guiding us and leading us in fulfilling our dreams and fulfilling the vision that you have for our life. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so the message today as you guys are leaving is don't quit your daydream. Don't quit the daydream. Pick up the dream and start dreaming again, right? It's time. There's dreams that are all over this house. There's dreams for this house, for our church. There's dreams that we have for this nation. And there's dreams that you have for families and loved ones. And we need to pick up those dreams and we need to walk those out this day. So we're going to end this day. If you guys can take the communion that is with you guys, you're able to take that home with you today. And you can uh, share that with your families at home. But we're going to leave the altars up here afterwards. If, if you've been in that place where you've been hopeless and you need hope back again, we're going to ask our leaders to come up here at this moment, and they're going to pray for you. And if you are new with us this day, uh, you're joining us or you're visiting, we ask you to come down to the hallway to, to join us in the visitors, the newcomers room, and we'd love to meet you and speak with you. God bless you guys. It's been wonderful sharing with you this day. Have a great holiday weekend, and uh, it's been an honor. You're just